My sisters and brothers, good morning. In today's gospel reading, we're invited to pray with, to contemplate what's perhaps one of the more famous uh, invitation, call stories, these vocation stories of Jesus calling the first companions, calling his first disciples. And it's telling that when Jesus begins his public ministry, one of the first things that he does is to go and to find, to call companions who will travel with him to share in his ministry, to share in his witness to God, to his proclamation of the coming of the kingdom. Now, it's not the most awe-inspiring of call stories, as we see Peter himself admits from the get-go that he was, one, pretty inept at his job, and two, that he's quite the sinful man. But Jesus invites him to trust. Jesus exhorts him, do not be afraid, do not fear. And then he's able to invite him. He's able to invite him deeper into companionship, into relationship with him, to leave behind whatever holds him back, and to bring all the rest to Jesus. I think as we reflect on our own vocations, our own invitation, the Christian vocation, to be companions, to walk with Jesus, to witness all that he does in our lives and those around us, that it's important that we take to heart this exhortation, this invitation, and the life to which he's inviting us. First is the exhortation, be not afraid, do not fear, one of the most common phrases on the lips of Jesus and throughout all of Scripture. God, through his prophets, through the angel messengers, and through Jesus, is constantly exhorting, do not be afraid. What is Jesus inviting us to dispel? fears, anxieties, and worries? What perhaps are we being invited to leave on the shore, to let go of? Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be fishers of men. And after that, they were able to leave things on the shore and follow him. The point is not that Jesus is inviting us to an abandonment of important things, but when we find something of surpassing value, when we find something that really touches our hearts, that we can take courage, that God is drawing near, and that we can let go of whatever holds us back, whether it's fears and anxieties or material goods and preoccupations in our work. Because by leaving these behind and by dispelling the fear, we then become free. We're liberated to receive and to respond in the way of what Jesus truly desires for us and for himself, and that is companionship. Yes, as I mentioned, it's telling that one of the first acts that Jesus does in his public ministry is to seek out companions and disciples. And vocation, at base, it's not just the question of what do I want to do or who do I want to be. These are both important questions to consider. But also, with whom do I want to be? The company you keep. And Jesus is inviting us into companionship with him. So there's the exhortation and then the invitation to realize that in companionship with Christ, we are called to come and see, to be fishers of people ourselves, to be faithful disciples who can be transformed by that relationship and to live out of that vocation. They bring it all to Jesus. Look at Simon Peter as an exemplar here in this scripture passage. He has a mix of emotions. He's probably exhausted and frustrated, working all night long, not being able to have a catch of fish. He's failed at his job that night, his profession. He's able to, in the encounter with Jesus, in witnessing then a miraculous catch of fish, he feels inadequate or perhaps a sense of shame. He's able to confess that honestly and transparently to the Lord. Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. This doesn't lead Jesus to turn his back on Simon Peter, though. By bringing it all to Jesus, by presenting it honestly and openly, he's able to then drop what holds him back, whatever weighs him down, and can bring to Jesus all the rest. These disciples, they heard the word. They spoke honestly and transparently of their fears and preoccupations, and yet, as Jesus invited them, upon hearing the word, they acted decisively enthusiastically they were free to follow to fall more in love to come to know and love him all the more and i think it's an important reminder for us 
This invitation is extended to each and every one of us in the Christian vocation. Perfection was no demand. In fact, Peter admits his own sinfulness. Skills and smarts were no demand. In fact, they seem quite inept at their own jobs before Jesus arrives. Clear understanding was no demand. In fact, this could only grow by drawing near to and following Jesus more closely. They grew in trust and in love, in devotion and companionship. These invitations, this is what Jesus offers, and Jesus desires companions. He seeks us out. And so today, as we reflect upon this call story of Simon Peter, of some of the first disciples, what is it that Jesus is inviting us to let go of? What is he inviting us to dispel? How is that leading us to a freedom, to be able to accept that invitation, to come and see and answer with whom do I want to be? Well, to whom, Lord, will we go? You have the words of everlasting life. Amen.